Hey guys, welcome to another Essential Tutorial. So today we're going to be learning how to use the animation engine in Element 3D within After Effects. So let's jump into it. So I just have a 3D model here. Um, you guys can use whatever 3D model you want, um, but we're going to be using a free fracture script in order to break this up and prepare it for importing into After Effects. So I'll link this script in the description below, but all you're going to do is go to File, Run Script, find the script uh, on your computer, and run it here. Simply pick the object that you want to fracture, and then we're just going to change a few of the settings in here. So I want this to go into 20 pieces and run through it. I've already done this before. It should give you a result of around 8,000 plus pieces, which is the amount of detail that we roughly want. Okay, so this is the um, end result here. Um, you can see that we have our model fractured into a bunch of different pieces. So now this is ready to get exported into Element 3D. So what you want to do is you want to select all of the pieces. And you're going to go to File, Export, Export Selected. And we're going to export an OBJ file here. And just hit Export. Okay, so once that's finished, um, we're ready to move on over to After Effects so we can start dealing with the file. All right, so let's uh, make a new composition here. So when working with Element 3D, we're gonna need to put it onto a layer. So let's just make a new solid here. Go to our effects, Element 3D. And the first thing you wanna do is go into our scene setup. So let's just import a 3D model here. This is the file we just exported. So let's just add a material. I've already gone and set one up here, but if you have any um, diffuse normal maps or um, specular maps or anything of that sort, you can apply it on a texture. So the first thing uh, you need to create is a camera, just so we can kind of navigate around our object. So let's change a few of the settings. I'm just going to enable our background layer, enable shadows, ambient occlusion, I think that's good for now. So in order to use the animation engine, the first thing that you need to do is set up the keyframes in order to transition from group one to group two. And how you simply do that is you're gonna enable the animation stopwatch at the beginning of your timeline, jump ahead roughly 10 seconds, and then you're gonna change that keyframe to 100%. So now at the beginning of our timeline, it's set to group one, and by the end of the timeline, it should be 100% in the group two um, category. So you can see it's not doing anything right now because group one and group two are both set to the exact same settings. But if we come down to group two, enable multi-object, and simply scatter the object, you're gonna see now that as we scrub through the timeline, it's going to be transitioning between our two groups. So let's change another few of the settings. I want to enable rotation. And I wanna change a few of the displace options as well. If 
you want to have it completely transition off, what I do is I tend to change the group size down to zero so that you can see the particles disappear. Okay, so let's just do a quick uh, RAM preview here and see what we got. So what we can also do is change the direction at which the object starts to break apart. If you don't like how it currently looks, you can go down into the direction options under the animation engine and you can just play around with the uh, horizontal and vertical settings. I'm also going to animate the camera just so we can add a bit of movement as well. And then I'm going to enable depth of field. Okay, so let's just uh, do a ramp review and see how it looks. So what I also did in the example in order to get all of like these small rain particles is I actually went to the element layer and I set it to the third channel as well. So although the animation engine is using group one and two for the transitions, by copying it to group three, I went down to the multi-object settings and changed each one of the particles to something very small, like 0 0.05 or something like that. And then I just blew them all out so that they'd be far apart. And even maybe that's a bit too small. Just scatter them some more. And so in order to get them to move, I just animated the displays. So just set a stopwatch on the Y displays channel and let's just move them up, maybe five. And let's also add some rotation on them as well. It'll just have, or it'll just add a bit of depth um, to the rendering. So let's just see how that looks. Actually, even that's a bit too much. Let's just, um, let's set it to one. All right, so here's just a quick uh, RAM preview. So the other thing I like to do is change the focal length on the camera. So if I just set it for 135 millimeters, for instance. And then I would repeat the shot from a closer angle and do a bunch of variations and then cut together a new sequence. Okay, so there you go. So I encourage you guys to play around with it and uh, I'd love to see the results if you guys wanna send me um, some of the stuff you guys create. Uh, I hope you learned something. Uh, feel free to leave any comments or questions below, and I'll see you next time.